Hi there, I'm making my second stop motion animation called The Ghost Under My Bed. It's a story that's set in the 1850s about a lonely little girl named Mabel who moves from Boston to a southern plantation where she befriends a ghost. Uh, if you're interested in stop motion animation, please subscribe. I'm going to show you my behind the scenes processes such as set building, texturing, detailing, also what equipment I'm using such as lights and sliders, and I'm shooting this project on my iPhone, so I'll also go over the apps I'm using for filming and stop motion. In this first video, I want to show you uh, a couple sets I'm working on, and I learned many of the techniques myself uh, through watching YouTube tutorials. So this is one of the sets I've been working on. It's the opening scene of the film, and in this scene, a little girl, Mabel, is moving uh, so the apartment, which is pretty derelict, is emptied out, and she's looking out at the streets of Boston. Now you can see here I have these little figures out on the street, and the only shot you'll see them in will be through the window, where you can see they kind of go out of focus. I'm going to use a shallow depth of uh, field, and then I'll move these characters around to give a sense of motion outside, and then with the street sounds and so forth, uh, it should make it really come to life. One of the best tips I got is creating worlds beyond the four walls you're doing your animation and to make it feel like a bigger world, you know, instead of just these walls. As you can see here, I've got a character that's uh, entering, so I created a hallway where she comes in. Again, it adds depth of field and visual interest when you have those extra spaces. Also, it helps to have movable walls. This has three walls, as you can see, and then this hallway comes out so I can go in when I want to get a shot of the character entering and any shots from that perspective. I learned a lot about doing texturing from a production designer friend. I wanted this apartment to look very aged and distressed, so I did layering of wallpapers that I could rip out. Um, I added soot and detailing around the fireplace and also the floors, which are basically made out of popsicle sticks. This is the original. I cut the ends off and then painted them. I did a lot of different colored texturing to make it look aged and worn. It's really in the details that will make this uh, come to life. My opening shot will be from outside this room. So I'm going to use the slider to get into the window, uh, which is missing the paint at the moment. Um, but again, I did a lot of texturing on the bricks and the windows. I basically painted and sanded them to make them look old and a bit derelict. And as you can see here, some of the walls are simply painted. Here's another set I've been working on. And in this one, I want a variety of shots. I created the hallway space again, but you can see this wall comes out. So that gives me a lot of options when I want to get shots. You really don't want to be shooting overheads in animation. You want to film at eye level like you do in film. So with the walls gone, I can do over the shoulders and so forth. In this case, I found some Victorian wallpaper online that I really liked, and so basically just printed it out and glued it on. A lot of props I purchased through Etsy and eBay, and a lot are self-made, like molds for picture frames, things like that, books and so forth. That's it for now. I hope you'll join me in the next video.